peace, y'all. My name is Rex Mason, and welcome to the first ever episode of The Solar Flare Show, where I'll be shining the brightest of lights on all my friends and my heroes. Now, I'm fairly new to this thing, so please be sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and be sure to check out my website, rexmason.com, where you can find links to all my music, my merch, as well as my social media accounts, including my Discord channel. The link is in the description. Now, like I said, this is only the first episode and it's also the holidays, so I wanted to set things off in a very special way. Because today, I'm sitting down with the guy who taught me how to make beats and who ultimately changed my life 20 years ago this year. That's right. We're gonna have a sit down chat and learn more about my cousin Mario, creatively known as Max Rice, who taught me how to make beats on a video game called Music Generator. For those unfamiliar with Music Generator, it was a video game created by a company called Jester Interactive and distributed by a company called Codemasters. And for me, as well as I'm sure millions of beginners, it was my first introduction to DAWs. It allowed you to write and sequence beats using a large collection of drum sounds, synth patches, and loops. A lesser known feature is that it actually allowed you to sample but it would take up so much space on your memory cards that it almost wasn't worth it. But that's the program I started on, and from there I went on to use FL Studio and then to Ableton Live, which I still use today. And it all started with the music generator and my cousin, so without further ado, here's our combo. All right, peace, y'all. My name is Rex Mason, and uh, welcome to the show. I don't have a name for it yet, but we'll have a name for you uh, when you hear this. I mean, when you see this. And uh, we are joined today by the man who is solely responsible for Rex Mason. I would not be here without him. This is my my brother, my big cousin on my mom's side, who taught me how to make beats 20 years ago. So introduce yourself, bro. Hey, peace, everybody. Salutations. This is uh the guy that he just introduced. I'm Mario Goodwin. That's my government name, but I go by Max Rice, a.k.a. the director of Manuscript. All right, and we're going to start from the very beginning. So I'm going to have you tell the, tell the good people out there about yourself. So, you know, tell them where you're from. Uh, tell them what you do. And uh, yeah, just yeah. Let's start off with with where you're from and what you do. Um, well, born in Illinois, Centerville, Illinois. You know that's that's the native native land. Born in Centerville, Illinois, right on the outskirts of East St. Louis. Um, you know, always always had you know a, a love for the music. You know, I grew up around it. You know, you know your dad, Uncle Greg, and uh, a host of other uncles, even my dad. You know, who played the guitar and sang in a band, and you know things like that. But uh, yeah, uh, grew up in Centerville, East St. Louis. Uh, was in honors classes throughout school. Always had a knack for words. You know. I never um really knew where that would lead to, but uh I won spelling bees, stuff like that, you know, that gave that would give people the notion like, you know, it might be something about this guy when it comes to letters and stuff. And uh but uh yeah, so if that helps you explain. Also, don't forget I have a second home, Connecticut. Connecticut uh is my second home, New England in the house. You yep. know, shout out to shout out to Mass, you know, Rhode Island, um, New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, you know. But that that Connecticut, man, that's you know, that's where me and Regis Mason, you know, we stopped on Connecticut grounds, man. So um Illinois native Connecticut resident, got a second family out there. So uh made a lot of friends and family out there. So man, you know. Is is you know it's been good, man. Been a I've I've been some places and uh, music was always with me. So uh, yeah, you know that's that's how that that's how that go as far as my um 
where I'm from and uh, what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the, uh, rundown on that. So what's up, Rex? All right. So, uh, I'm going to ask you a question. I don't think I ever asked you this question ever. And that is, how did you get introduced to hip hop? Uh, I'm going to take it back far as I, like, far as I can about the origin that really, you know, caught my ear because, you know, it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff along the way, but that very first, I'm going to try to get to one of the first, man. Like, so I'll kind of give you like my top three and, and, uh, no particular order, but, um, I remember when um my mom and dad were still together, man. I had to be like three and a half, four years old. We were living on Bond Avenue down in uh by the South End. That's a that's another area in East St. Louis. Uh, mm-hmm. so like they had these living room get togethers and uh, you know, it was, I, I would say it was like the early eighties, eighty one, eighty two, eighty three, and um they would um be playing like Atlantic Star and all that and then, you know, that was the seventies kind of theme, which was cool. But then, I think one of them times, man, I heard uh, "Hard Times," man, Run DMC, and uh, it's like that, and that's the way it is. And man, I was like, this rapping, man, this it was a different beat than the than the soul music. I was like, and then I started hearing some Curtis Blow, you know what I'm saying? And but like I. I think that Ron DMC might have been the first, even though they wasn't the first hip hop artist in my life, that was the first time I heard boom, 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 that boom bapping, man. I just, mm. I needed it after that, man. Like, so that, like, in my Aunt Sharon's living room, where they were smoking, you know, marijuana and having wine, <laughs> and the kids had to be upstairs, they let me come down because I, I was good at doing the Michael Jackson. So I got some of them, uh, you know, them entertainment privileges in there. But, like, you could hear it coming, you know, from upstairs. Like, you can hear what was playing, and, like, we have come down, and I was like, man, but, like, that there, that might have been one of the first times I heard it. And then, like, you know, after that, Houdini, you know, Uncle Allen used to have them Alpine systems, and, like, you know, they was one of the other first, like, groups that, you know what I'm saying, that I heard. And like man, I just them beats, man. Like that, that got me. Like bro, I ain't never looked back after that. We ain't even gonna talk about when when I heard Rock Kim, but like that Ron DMC, man. I have to say that was the first one of the first times. And uh, and yeah, man, that was my introduction, bro. Now, during your teens and your twenties, you amassed a crazy CD collection. <laughs> I mean, crazy and and. To, to address y'all real quick, like, I don't think I've ever seen anyone else with a collection like his. I'm talking like, you know, everything from, from Gangstar to digging in the crates to, you know, damn near half the, or, or most of the No Limit and Cash Money uh, discography. Like, everybody, like Fiend, Young Bleed, everybody, Cain and Abel, all of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, my question for you is like, when did you like kind of start <laughs> buying rap albums and, and like um, how much time would you spend in music stores growing up? Like, you know, listening to CDs, buying CDs or, or just like music in general. Bro, I'm going to tell you now, I, I'm going to I'm going to uh, elaborate on what you was just saying, because I already remember what you was talk- talking about when you said the collection, bro, because, you know, I had two CD booklets I mm. had. Had a down south west coast CD book that was a little blue and black one I had. Then I had the fat one. I had the other one with all East Coast, and mm. you know it was crazy because I think I didn't even think about it when I did it. But now that I think back, I separated because I was like, when I want to hear my my uh boom bap, I don't feel like flipping through it. I need to already know I'm in the East Coast folder. Mm. I don't waste time when it comes to because if I'm feeling some kind of way that I want what I want to hear I need to go and be able to get it you know I ain't got no patience so and then sometimes I'd be like man you know I might miss home a little bit miss Illinois and I might go ahead and come on with that juvenile about the blue and black one or, or put in some uh some spice one 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I and then I, when I want to hear that, I got to have it because then I'm going to come through with the bass drum, the 808s, and they're going to be like, yeah, more back on his Midwest. <laughs> so, yeah, man, like, but, like, bro, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take you back. When I really start buying tapes, because you got to remember, I'm 80s baby, but I was a teen in the 90s because mm-hmm. I started middle school well, I got to seventh grade right in the fall of 1990. So, bro, like, NWA and Easy e had already played the part, the charts around where we was at, you know, now. And I was starting to get in the NBA real heavy, the DOC. And, bro, I'm going to tell you, when I really, like, remember when I first had felt like I had the fiend to go buy this tape, it was man. Because I was like, man, NWA don't get no harder. And I thought Cube had wound up being first to go solo right after Easy. So I was like, man, this dude used to sell when we stayed on State Street. This dude, he got a store now. Uh, and he was right there where across from where the grocery store. He had like a a, a a trailer, like a track, like an 18 foot trailer, like the track the rigs be having. He had all this stuff in there. And bro, I went up there one time and I saw that America KKK's Most Wanted, Ice Cube. Yeah. Well, I get home, I was like, why ain't nobody else on this joker? But I had to listen to that mug, man. I listened to it and I man, I knew that I know that album almost right now, front and back but I was like, and he didn't diss them on there, so I was like, okay. I was like, these boys finna be on here, Cube solo. I was like, no, nah, he was gone. <laughs> it kind of it kind of hurt me when I think <laughs> but he didn't diss them on the first one, so I ain't know. But mm. they dissed him on 100 miles around. I was like, oh, see, I'm, I'm just telling you, like, this is the first time I I had anticipated. I didn't even know he came out with a solo tape. I was like, damn, mm. let me go on and get this cue because I know I'm finna hear. I'm telling you, I remember that like yesterday, boy. I, I know that tape, right? You put it on right now, bro. I rap it word for word, every song. Yeah. Facts. That's the I, one, I man. wish I could, but, you know, I'm going to put this on YouTube. <laughs> no, I know. Put this on, you know what I'm saying? And, and they'll they'll definitely like take my shit down. You know what I mean? <laughs> but <laughs> No, yeah, no, that's cool, bro. But oh, I'm man. long-winded because, bro, I remember, that's what I'm saying, like music, for me in my life, I ain't gonna talk too much long before you get to the next time, but like, that's what it is for me, bro. Like, it captured moments in time. Yeah. And I know if you name an album or you play a song, bro, I'll, give, I'll be able to tell you exactly what was going on in my life at that time. And that was and that tape right there started me to spend money yeah. <laughs> on now, music. Yeah. Now I wanted to ask you, um, how was it growing up in East St. Louis, and how did it inf- uh, influence your your relationship with music? Like, uh, I guess a, a broader or a more detailed question uh, from that is like, you know, what what were they playing on the radio when you were growing up? You know, what I'm saying like like. And yeah, just like kind of elaborate on, you know, growing up in, in East St. Louis and how it influenced your relationship with music, your music, personal music, and like what you were listening to. Man, like I lived in the heart of the ghetto, bro. Like, and I ain't say this ain't no knock on my mom and my, you know, my stepdad, you know, because Centerville is my other side with my parents, like with my mom and my stepdad, like cause that's why the roof I came up under. Like, I woke up to gunshots. That's how I knew it was time to get up. And then sometimes they'll be in the distance, like five, six blocks down. You're like, man, somebody getting it on. Pop, 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 pop. Sometimes them jokes will last for like five minutes, bro. Like, I'll be like, damn, they still shooting? Hmm. Sometimes, man, joke will be on, <laughs> be uh, hobbling up the street leaking. Coming hey. in front of the house. Jokers be, I be in the backyard hooping, jokers be jumping the fence running from the police, and you be knowing them. Mm. Like, it was crime, dog. Like, I stayed on 26th, 25th was on the other side. That was one of the main streets that ran you from, like, down by the south end all the way to uh, Washington Park. It damn near made me have the wrong mindset because for, for a person that was looking at hip-hop, and seeing how cats was coming out of cities, I was like, I know this city is gritty. So I was like, this is the perfect place to start my career. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm almost like thinking stupid. Like, mm. bro, like you don't want to start your career where you waking up every other day, pop, pop, pop. Oh, time to get up. Uh, it's almost like I started doing that. Mm. Like became desensitized to the violence, but so I was like, man, you know, I was man on a roll all through school, but I just felt like then, then you know, <clears throat> first time I, you know, you know, got a that real taste of an East Coast video. I mean, BDP was always out, but like, you know, when I start seeing that that roots and Gangstar and and Nas. Like once I like once I had really started seeing the East Coast videos though, man, like and seeing how they was like rapping under like you know overpasses and walking down tracks, I was like, we got track. I was like, man, bro, like I, I'm telling you, bro, I already knew I was I was an East Coast cat at heart, but like I always knew my mind was wrapped around it so strong it'll take me out there one day, and mm. it took me, bro, for real. That's that mind is powerful, bro, like. It took me straight to the East Coast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of the East Coast, what led you to move to Connecticut? I'm going to tell you what how I got out there naturally, but, like, bro, like, knowing what I know now, like, I was so hard into that war and stuff, man, and I was I was even dressing like it. Mm. My, mind took, my mind took me out there, bro, but, like, what led me to go – we went to visit in 95. I think me, Dante, and PD caught the train. Mm. And we was just going, you know, to get away. This one, y'all was still living in Trumbull. Yep. We went out, and I was like, okay, so I'm out here. But I'm with them, you know what I'm saying? And which we, with PD, you know, I call him Chef Wisto, like Ray Juan. He kind of was on it, but I was like, man, you know, I was like, I'm out here. And that's when I first met my boy Darren. We went to hang out with, we went to stay over sisters. And so, that was like 95 or something before my senior year. So when I finished uh in 98, like my uh the spring semester of my sophomore year, I kind of really wasn't doing too much around the crib. You know what I'm saying? I was working a little odd job, job. So, you know, and sister, she had asked me, did I want to come, you know, and, and stay with her? Because, you know, uh, you know, it was just her and, she probably was like, you know, it'll give you a different change of atmosphere because I was just still, you know, in the city hooping, rhyming, doing stuff. But, you know, East St. Louis have its limitations, too. You know that. So, uh, and just I said, and uh, uh, real, sorry to cut you off. I just wanted to give a little context. No, when uh, when when Mo says sister, he means uh, our aunt Charlene, but we call her sister. Yeah. So, you know, this isn't like. Yeah. His sister, nothing like that. Like we, we just call right. her. So, yeah, right, but, she but the, she the old, right? Yeah, no, I'm glad you said it because she is our, our aunt actually, but she's the oldest out of all of her siblings, so she was the big, big sister. So they just basically called her sister. She mm -hmm. was the sister mama, basically. Yeah. So no, you know, but uh, she had gave me the olive branch, and so I said, you know, I always had a good relationship with her. She practically, you know, her and. All my aunts, your mom included, always had had me. You know, I was one of the first grandchildren that was around like that. So I was more like a little brother to them because I grew up with all my aunts and uncles. So, uh, you know, I did. I went out there, man, and I uh, reconnected with my boy there and, you know, started working. And I was like, I ain't visiting, though. Like, I'm out here. And, mm. bro, like. I fit in so good, even though I introduced a lot of uh, music around here to them, like just the fact that I knew all of the East stuff, it wasn't hard to get in, you know what I'm saying, and be a part of the East Coast because I was already living like that. Mm. Being out there and me having my accent, but Hitting, hitting them bars, man. Cats just kind of took to me, and they was just like, man, you know, I was already saying yo and word because I was hip hop anyway. That ain't even East Coast only. That's that's hip hop. You go on the West Coast, and cats be living that shit just like that. Mm -hmm. Like I said, bro, that was that's East Coast for me, man. You know, that's that's what my mind took me out there, and then my aunt invited me, kind of confirmed it. So, 
Mm-hmm. And I like, and you know what? I made mistakes out there, but I always work and I always start getting more underground because some of my homies that was staying where I was at, they had like the other underground stuff. I was like, bro, like it was, a, it was, you know, it was love, man. Like it, it was a good experience to go out there for somebody like me. You already know that <laughs> I rep CT, man. Yep. Me too. I'm like, even out here, I mean, I've been, I've been in New York for almost, almost eight years now. And, yeah. You've been there for a minute. Yeah. And like, even though, you know, I got a lot of friends saying like, yo, you know, you were, you were New Yorker, you, you know, we claim you kind of thing, but you know, I still rep CT to the fullest, like anywhere I go, no matter like <laughs> no matter where I'm at, you know what I mean? If I'm at a show, I'll, you know, I'll say that, yo, I'm from CT on the website. I'm from CT. You know what I mean? So it's in everything I do because it's it was like a huge part of my my upbringing, I, you know, not just because I live there, but because, you know, I believe in, no. in so many of the people there and like they're with yeah. me whenever I do my. Yeah. Out here. So, you know, what I mean, yeah, no, but, uh. So let's and you know you can't spell you can't spell Connecticut without the connect, man. So oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh <laughs> let's let's switch gears a little bit. So um when did you first discover my interest in music? Oh, bro. I'm gonna tell you, I'm going back, bro. We was in trouble, man. We was in trouble and uh that's when uh that was the time when we visited. This still now we going back to when me, Dante, and, and Petey was there. Mm-hmm. We used to be in our basement, because you know, you could open the sliding doors there and walk out to the swimming pool. Mm-hmm. Like on the door on a lower level, you know what I'm saying? And we'll be watching. We I mean we was down there watching Jason's lyric and all that, man. Like, but anyway, at that time. I'm gonna say if that was had to be the summer '95, you had to be about, you had to be four, cause you you got a January birthday, mm-hmm. and all I can remember you hearing, cause you know Rizzo used to throw that uh Tiger style, and oh, you yeah, used to yeah, be yeah. like Tiger Scout. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that boy, I said that boy gonna be a scout. <laughs> he said Tiger Scout. Oh, tiger. I was like, man, he was. You used to be you used to be singing it too, and it was funny because I was like you were still trying to get the words, but mm-hmm. you was you was with it. I was like I was like man, we used to be laughing, boy. We used to be cracking up at that. That boy said Tiger Scout, <laughs> and uh, that's when I knew because you picked up on stuff pretty fast, man. Like because you know all we was listen- at that point, bro, out there, all we was listening to was Biggie, Wu Tang, and uh. And I was like, because around here, Biggie had got big. We used to be singing in school. Like, it was a lot of people messing with Biggie. A little bit of Wu and some cats was kind of, you know, talking about Nas. But, like, man, like, out there, that's what they was banging on, like, 97.1 or something like that mm-hmm. in Connecticut. It was the station then. That was a moment I knew. But when I really, bro, like, when I really found out that you had it, Cause I ain't really know like the gap between that ninety five and then me coming back in ninety eight, but mm-hmm. then I left again in two thousand. I left that March. And I left in May of two thousand. Came stayed. Came back that next year in two thousand one of June. I got back and we uh moved from Sterling to over by uh on like we was on South colony or something like that and man like you know i had uh you know been seeing y'all and stuff from visiting but like when i was able to start coming there when i I came with sister a couple of times and then once i knew figured in my mind how to get back have came enough you know i started coming on my own and then that's when i had seen you in the basement bro this like 2002 because this was that next year after i got there so i was like man i'm gonna go up here and hang out with you know I got other family here. I ain't just got to stay here. I'm just go see my aunts and cousins and uncles. Mm. So, man, then you was, you know, you was in middle school by now. You was like in, uh, you was in fifth or sixth. Yeah, I was in, uh, I was in like the first half of my, of, of sixth grade. 
Yeah. Okay. So you was in middle school. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man, like you was you had you had went I went downstairs. I don't know if you was I think you just had was like want me to see or something because you was like uh or you had mentioned I was like, man, hey man, I'm like you down there on the wheels of steel scratching how you scratching. I'm like, and that's all I got a question for you about that. I'm like, hey man, and ain't making no mistakes. I'm like, yeah. ain't making no mistakes, bro. I'm like, I'm like, come on, man. Like, and it was just like, I remember I used to have one turntable and I was kind of all right with the scratching and bringing it back and releasing it, but I was just like, man, that I was like, that's that's something like me writing rhymes, you know what I'm saying? And like it, it just looked like you had it's like it was effortless. Then I looked in your notebook and I was like, oh yeah, that's when the first time I didn't even know about Xbox. It was like PlayStation Xbox. It was one of them rhymes you had. I was like, hmm. the hell is an Xbox? <laughs> so I was like, okay. Then it then I started hearing, I was like, okay, so it came, it came to me. I say, now nah, he's scratching. And he writing rhymes. I was like, and for where you was at, I was like, you know, that's that was what your lifestyle was like, your generation, you know, Xbox stuff that you know you would talk about for you where you was at. So I'm like, yeah, he ain't trying to be, you know, something he ain't. I was like, yeah, okay, it's gonna remind me of me. So I was like, but I knew I had had start making beats like when I got back home from that first time. That's when I had start, you know. I heard about the generator, so I went and got one. So I was like, yeah, me and Darren and Mike used to mess with it all the time. So when I came back, I had, you know, introduced it to a couple of people out there that didn't know. It's like, all right. So when I had, by then, I had got decent at it by the time we was where I'm saying I was seeing what you was doing. By that time, I had, you know, had a little collection of beats from home and some I had made out in Connecticut, you know, spending time with it. But I was like, man, he scratching, he DJing and writing. So I was like, man, let me let him. You know, I brought let you hear some of my tracks and stuff. I was like, man, yeah, you know, it's a nice, easy to do kind of thing. You know, take a little work because it got a lot of stuff you could do. I was like, let me see if he might be. You know, why not? Mm-hmm. So you know, that's you know, I already seen that you was DJ DJing the hardest thing to me. So I was like, um. Yeah, let me let him check it out. So, yeah. So, here's here's my my recollection of it. So, guys, we're talking about like the day before Christmas Eve. So, you know, Mo and and my aunt sister, um, they uh, drive up from um from y'all were staying in Waterbury, right? Or or Meriden? That's what Meriden, yeah, because you know Poochie okay. stayed in Waterbury. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um they drive up for the holiday. Um Mo couldn't even get his bags down. He, you know, I'm like trying to say, like, yo, you should like come with me to the to the basement, let me show you my setup and all of that. And then um and so like I show him the setup, then we then we go upstairs. We uh we grab one of your CDs. You had a beat CD of generator tracks. Yeah. And yeah. And that the had flavoristic was one of them with the hearts. Yeah, and that's the one where I was like, that one blew my mind. I was like, <laughs> you know, because that that intro, that dun, 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 like yeah, yeah like that. Yeah. I was like, that's the white. You, I was like, you made this, I'm like yeah. you, and, <laughs> and I needed to know how. And then you you didn't even say anything. You were just like, yo, come with me. And then we went into the to the guest room where y'all were staying, I think, and um, mm-hmm. and then you powered up the the PlayStation, and then you put in a music generator, and then you made like a a quick beat, and then you and, and you didn't like I was just I was just tuned in, I was just dialed in, I was watching everything, <laughs> and then you were like, "Yo, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go downstairs, I'm a I'm a you know." Like chop it up with everybody else. Here, you try now. And I was up there for maybe. Uh, I was up there for like for a good while. Uh, I want to say it was like two and a half to like three hours before my mom came up, 
and like had to turn off the TV for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I already I had already made a beat in that time, but like she she had to come up and like turn off the TV, like, yo, this is family time, come down and, and hang with the family. And I think around that time, my grandparents got rest their souls. They had gotten there too. So I think I had to help them with like, you know, the yeah. luggage and everything. And, you know, the typical family stuff you do around Christmas. Yeah. So I'm like, it was family time, man. He, he was he was spending time with some of his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but no, nah, man, you know, you know how our parents do it. You know, you, you you come out your room, I say, man, you know, that's your he he's starting his career up in here, man. He mm -hmm. in school. <laughs> but yeah, man, that that sound about right, cause cause like and, and you like you say, you ain't let me get my bags. Now I, I couldn't get them down fast enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cause cause you know, man, I was a little bit I was a bit older than y'all, but like I'm one of the I'm one of the cousins. Like it just never mattered. I was like, man, you know, that's the point where I, I like to be in my family life from the jump because then you can have more connection. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I was I was good with it. I was like, then you know, to know you was walking that path. I was like, you know what? Get me because see, I don't really like to read, bro. And then you know, the game can't the the program because it's more like a program because it's not really a game. Mm -hmm. It came with that book. And I just kind of me figured it out on my own. I look at some stuff, but I just I just messed with it so much to where I figured out. But I'm like, man, for you, like you say, to know I because I I showed you some stuff, but like for that other stuff, man, you had to kind of like I was like, did he read the book? Because I ain't really go into that because I couldn't about what the book said because I didn't read it. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what what did he do? I'm like. To get the understanding of how to separate the riffs and you know the echoes and all that, you know, I think I had showed you the volume and stuff at the bottom, you know, to take it from to fade it out. Mm -hmm. But like just the other stuff, I know I, I know I didn't spend that much time with you as far as sitting there with you and walking you through it. Because like I said, the next time when I actually did leave it. I don't know how long was it. When, what did I come back like? The next like two weekends after that, or was it? Because I yeah. know I ain't leaving with you all super long because I was gonna want that mug back. Yeah. So it, I say maybe two weeks because I did want to give you time not only to just you know so you can get comfortable. I was like, cause I know if he under he says he understand music, it ain't gonna take him long. Mm -hmm. But I ain't, I'm gonna be honest, bro. Like, like you said, it took you a couple of hours to make the first one. Like. For you to, no, I came back, bro. Your whole tape. I think that was a ninety-minute tape or something. It, even even if it was a sixty-minute tape, bro, that's impressive. To mm. have it filled up on both sides. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, man, who? Man? He trying to go? He trying to get a deal without me on this one? <laughs> you know, I say, I say he gonna try to get a deal without me. I don't want to love him that much. But no, I was just, I'm just. <laughs> you know, busting your balls, man. But no, nah, yeah. bro, like, I was impressed because, and not only was it a tape full of beats filled up, the way you made yours ain't how mine were. They, your beats sounded totally different from mine. Mm. And that's the love, that's why I love it because, because, you know, I would make mine straight up sometimes from scratch from a simple sound. You already know because you, you'd seen it and heard it and because I hear it like that, you know, that's why I was like, asking you sometimes, I was like, man, just uh, try to see if you can make it from scratch. But what you kind of did, because the way you broke your riffs up, I didn't do mine like that. Or if you started from a single sound, I was like, damn, that's crazy that you can get a whole nother sound just by, you know, you being your own, hearing the way you hear it. And that's why I was like, man, yeah, you, I was like, bro, he got it, bro. I was like, he got all of them. And, and I felt like then, I was happy for you because I knew you wouldn't need to uh you could really establish your you could put all your own vibes out there because like with the stand you could I was like he could scratch on his own tracks and I was like he got the triple threat. That kind of leads and into I, my my last question. So like when you initially showed me how to uh, you know like ran through it one time and was like, all right, figure it out. 
did you ever imagine that it would like change the trajectory of my life? I I didn't I could really put a finger on, on you know as far as the exact destination it would lead you to, but I know what it did for me. And you, you know when you feel music, like I know I know you can attest to this. When I hear songs, I don't, I don't only hear. To, to be good, I'd be trying to figure out what's making it feel like that. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I, I, I dig in a little bit further. So what I did know is that by me, you know, giving you that alley-oop is that, you know, <laughs> I know from what I've seen you doing with the other instruments, if you spent enough time with it, then it was going to end up doing what it was needed to do. And, and I just know that if you a person that love music, you should you should have everything. You should you know when you hungry for knowledge, you want more. So I was just feeding you, bro. Like I was like, if he eat, <laughs> he gone. Is you know the rest. That's all I. Hey, you was already doing it. So I was just like, man, here. So I mean, I felt like if you was scratching like <laughs> Pete, like Jazzy Jeff at eleven. If I give you some production. Material, uh, software won't you be doing it like cream and I gave you what to listen to and I just you know man just that's just you know and then like outside of music bro that's just me like if I get something good I like everybody to be happy I'm like bro you gotta experience this like you know what I'm saying <laughs> if I get hit with a million and I get to start traveling and, 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 and looking at fish in clear water run across my feet I'm like man somebody else need to see this because this is amazing so mm. that's kind of how that's the vibe i had from it then you know i couldn't <clears throat> like on a musical level bro like even though you was my cousin that was years younger than me your comprehension was like me talking to somebody that was already in the industry because people that love it that hip-hop like us is rare man you know they don't like that K.O.S. want to say, man, rap is something we do. Hip-hop is something we live. This was, like, all I, I wanted to do. And, like, I, you know, after you, after you showed me Music Generator, like, I knew, like, this, th that I wanted to do music at some capacity. And I just, like, kind of, you know, just made certain moves. Sometimes it, it was to my detriment. Sometimes it was to my benefit. But it all led me to here, to right now. And I have you to thank for that. Now, I have, I actually have, because you, you sent me a CD of, like, my tracks, like, a few years ago. And I actually have the first beat I ever made queued up. So I'm going to play that for a little bit. to start somewhere man <laughs> but look where you ended up but yeah. like that was it it just it just gave you the opportunity to uh to express your inner because you know beats is like rhymes man you got to get them out it's therapeutic mm -hmm. you know to get them out so man that's i'm glad you was able to uh bless us with that with that ill uh the ill loops man yeah man and uh <laughs> And I'm actually going to um, I'm going to release a tape by the time this comes out. Um, uh, I'll have like a re uh, release, like a little EP of like some of those some of those beats. You know what I mean? Um, I'm thinking like maybe yeah. I'll, I'll probably do like eight to ten of those tracks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so just so people can understand like and and know like where I came from, how I started. 
and I and I hope that's a, you know inspiration to everybody else because I know uh, number one I know mad mad people out there a lot of uh, other producers you know who who started out on music generator like me and had a you know a, a brother figure or a cousin figure that that showed them how to work it and everything. So it's something that I know that they could resonate with. And hopefully if they have their beats still, they can, uh, they'll be inspired to put those out in the world. And uh, it's also for the kids yeah. too, man. It's also for anybody coming up, you know, cause you're not going to be you no know, goddamn uh, like DJ premier. You're not going to be a, a Pierre born, a Kenny beats, uh, you know, I have one. Yeah, a ninth wonder. You're not you, you won't be like a superstar out the gate, but we all start somewhere and it's all about, you know, keeping the keeping the train going. And yeah, the evolution, keeping that momentum up and just like building on that momentum. You know what I mean? And and just like constantly being a student, constantly, you know, working hard at it. So uh and uh I think I think that's a good stopping point. So Mo again. I wanted to thank you not only for this interview, but you know, just for for changing my life, man. I really appreciate it. And right. I and I love you, man. Appreciate you so much for this, man. Because I needed the, I needed to get this out, man. So I'm glad you was the one to be able to pull it from the chest. Oh yeah, <laughs> like there's no one I would have rather like set off my whole content creation journey with than than you, man. So again. I thank you and to everybody else. Thank you for tuning in. And uh and yeah, we'll again we'll have a we'll have a name for the show by the time this this comes out. And uh happy holidays. Stay over 9,000. Don't eat too much turkey, man. <laughs> <laughs>